I don't want to hand at cards in two weeks. My love life's in the toilet, and I can't buy a decent bust. How is it new sunglasses will change your luck, Rick? Well, I can only guess that the old ones had some mojo, because since I lost them, it's been downhill. What do you think? These look lucky to you? Oh, very lucky. Would you excuse me for a second? Excuse me, ma'am! Taxi! Where are you going? She dropped her rabbit. So? Excuse me. Ah, excuse me. Sorry. Fine automobile. For five bucks, they gotta be worth a try, huh? Yes, ma'am. And you know, for future reference, you might want to fasten your handbag more securely. Wow. That's just so nice. Are you all right, ma'am? Mm. Very good. No. I mean, maybe. I mean, do you think maybe this could be a sign? A sign of what? Well, funny. She's my good luck charm, you know? And I don't know. A lot of people think I'm really weird because I have a good luck charm. Well, you're not alone. Hey, keep your pants on, you jerk! You're some kind of cop, aren't you? I think Bunny must have brought you to me for a reason. Lady! Look, tonight... Come here. Come here. Two o'clock at a liquor place called Canerico. Just don't tell anybody I told you, okay? I don't even know who you are. Yeah, I know. Lady! You can go now. What was that all about? I really don't know, Ray. Well, I gotta tell you, these shades aren't the answer. Ten seconds after I put them on, I got hit by a bicycle well, messenger. Don't throw them out. I may have brought you something interesting after all. Nice tip, Benny. Who the lady say she was? She didn't. But I think I know where to look. I'm sorry, boys. I don't remember. How could you not remember? She was here yesterday. She's about 5'3", a blonde, and was wearing a green coat. A picture. It might help. I'm visually oriented. Yeah, well, we didn't think to take her picture. Oh, I wish I could help. Oh, would you, would you boys like a coffee? Yeah, coffee would be great. 
cream? No. All right, here you go, Ray. I'm afraid it's the best I can do. What, are you kidding me? It's perfect. No, it's not perfect. The angle of the line from the chin to the jawline. I said it's perfect. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I remember her. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is there anything you can tell us about her? Nothing. I, I never saw it before. Look, did she say anything? Where she was from, where she was going, maybe, you know, hair appointment, grandfather, anything? No, not a word. Except tuna surprise and tea with lemon. Does that help? No. All right, look, if you see her again, give me a call. Thank you kindly. Boys, there was something peculiar about her money. Not like she kept them in her hat like you, but... Here. Here's a tip she left me. I don't know if it means anything or not, but... Uh, you don't see bills folded like this very often. No, you don't. Well, you do if you know where to look. You think it's likely she's an entertainer of this type, right? Yeah, where else are you going to find Dollar Bill's phone so it'll stay in a G-string? Thank you. Hey, Benny, you ever been in a place like this before? Not that I recall right now. Oh, don't they have these places up in the Yukon? Oh, sure, sure they do. They're just all, all that common, that's all. So what do you guys do for bachelor parties up there? Well, look, the only one I've ever attended, Ray, a prize was awarded for the best impression of the mating call of a bull moose. Yeah, don't tell me you won. All right. Huh? Nothing. I hope this isn't too embarrassing for you, Benny. Uh, no, it's not embarrassing in the least, Ray. Then how come you're not looking? Well, I only saw the face of the woman we're tracking, and I don't believe I could recognize her by her other features. I'm sorry we're not being more successful, Ray. I, I may have to pick up with you again tomorrow. I have night duty at the consulate in an hour. All right, this is the last one. We're in, we look, we're gone, all right? Two. Twenty. Give me a receipt. Receipt? That's what I said, a receipt. It's coming. Ten bucks a pop just to get in the door. I wonder why this place makes so much money. Your receipt. Thanks. Have a good time. Thank you kindly. Get someone else to fill in. You're not a bouncer anymore. You're management. You are absolutely right. You, you're absolutely right, Mr. Ardover. That, that's not going to happen again. a boy. Any trouble from Lipback tonight? No, not at all. Nothing, not a thing. You go, everything was beautiful. Hey, uh, I heard about the bus last night. I lost a good man on that one. Yeah. Well, Mr. Ardover... If there's anything, absolutely hey, thanks, anything Bear. I can I got a lot of ground to cover on You know, there. anything at all? Hey. Keep up the good work, huh? I'll get you back to work and keep looking myself. Ooh, nice uniform, soldier. Uh, actually, I'm not a soldier. I'm not mounted. I'll bet you are. <laughs> you know, Benny, you gotta let me borrow that uniform sometime. It's got a lot more juice than these glasses. And now, gentlemen, the jewel in our crown, the goddess of love, Aphrodite.
Hey, Benny, isn't that... Yes, it is, Ray. Okay, you talk to her. She didn't see me. She saw you. Come on. Ray, I really do have to get going. And perhaps I'll, uh, I'll just try and schedule an appointment. No, we've got to make contact now. I wonder if I could... What are you doing here? I would like to introduce you to a friend of mine. No, I shouldn't have said anything to you before. Why don't you just leave me alone, okay? She doesn't want to talk to you, Ray. Oh, I don't care. She has to. Benny, you're holding a rat. Yes, I'm aware of that, Ray. Uh, now you're kissing it? No, I'm smelling her breath, actually. Come on. There you go. All right, off you go. You have nothing to be afraid of. Well, that, that may not be true in the larger scheme of things, but at least this ordeal is over. So, off you go. Doodaloo. Oh, hello. I can't let anyone see me talking to you. Go to my apartment and let yourself in. Here's my spare key and my address. I'll be there in 15 minutes. Take it. Very good. Constable Turnbull? Yes, it's Constable Fraser. Listen, I wonder if you'd be so kind as to stay on duty for approximately 20 minutes until my arrival. No, you won't get into trouble. I'm sure the ins... Turnbull. Turnbull? Calm down. Now, you are just the messenger. She will not shoot you. Well, if she does, I'll admit I was wrong. All right, thank you kindly. Hi. Hello, Ida. How do you know my name? Saw it on the mailbox. All right. Nobody followed you here, did they? No. Good. I figured they'd all be preoccupied at the club. I can't believe you tracked me. Who are you guys? I'm Constable Benton Fraser, RCMP. What? Uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police. And this is my friend, Detective Ray Vecchio. Chicago PD. Oh, God. Look, I shouldn't have said anything to you guys yesterday, and I have nothing else to say now. So it was really nice to meet you, and I hope you have a good night. You know, Ida. Ida. That crime that you tipped us off to? Mm -hmm. Well, that was pretty serious. Yeah. We just want to know a little more about it. Well, like I said, I, I, I mean, I can't say anything else. You know, as police, our job is to help you. Uh -huh. Now, if you don't want to help us, we're going to have to slap you with a subpoena. Oh, God, I am such an idiot. No, Ida, you're not. You were concerned about something. You acted responsibly. You have a good conscience. She's a stripper. Dancer. I don't think I like you very much. You don't have to like me. You just have to talk to me. You're worried about someone. A man. A man who smokes too much. How did you know that? Well, you don't smoke, and yet you have ashtrays stationed everywhere in your apartment. He also drinks rather more than you'd like. The indentation on the lacquer of this chest suggests that there was decanter here until recently. And then you became concerned, and you removed the liquor so there'd be less temptation, but it didn't work, did it? No. You wish he would stop doing what he's doing and let you take care of him? You got all that from just looking around my apartment? Yes. Wow. Who's the guy? Not 
talking to you. Ask her who the guy is. She's not going to betray him, right? Tell her she has no choice. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, he's here. He's here. Oh, oh quick, get, get, get in the closet. Right you are. I am not getting in the closet. No, he, he can't find you here. He, it, it'll ruin everything you I am not getting in the closet. I'm going to stand please. right here till he comes upstairs and we're going to have a little chat. Ray, please get in the closet. Benny, get out of the closet. Ray, get in the closet. I am not getting in the closet. Ray, if you don't get in the closet, you'll lose your source. What a night. I, can you believe it, babe? These, these rats right in the damn club. Are you all right? Yeah. I had to get out of there. Just, I close the place down. I call the exterminator. This is getting serious, babe. I need a drink. Baby, you've been drinking all hey, day. Hey, I don't have enough grief already. I mean, how am I going to get through this, baby, if you're going to give it to me, too? Baby, you've been acting so tense lately. Come on, you can talk to baby, me. You don't understand, baby. Business is business. You, you don't need to know. You don't, you don't want to know. I want to know. He's conked. Let's get out of here. Are you guys all right? We're fine. No, we're not all right. Thank you so much for doing this. Just tiptoe out, okay? Not until you tell me who that guy is. That's Barry Pappas, my boyfriend, although I'm starting to wonder why. Barry Pappas? Didn't he used to be a fighter? That's right. I lost money on that guy. Uh, shut up. Shh. I, I, I can do it. Just give me a shot. Who's he talking to? Oh, I, I didn't want you to hear this. Tomorrow, uh, I'll fix him for you. So this is how you knew about the liquor truck? Uh -huh. uh, I'll, I'll burn it to the ground. I'm not going to wake him up and ask him. All right, fine. I will. No. Probably won't have to. He's in a fourth stage REM trance, enhanced by the effects of alcohol. Well, what's that mean? It means he's talking in his sleep. Oh, you could have just said right, so. Barry, talk to me. What are you going to burn? Uh, what you said. What did I say? Uh, warehouse. Third and green midnight. You're going to let me do it, right? Yeah, we're going to let you do it. Just tell us whose warehouse are you going to burn. Barry. Barry! Barry! Oh, baby, you're the best. You're the best, baby. All right, are you satisfied? No, I am not satisfied. Now, what I need from you is to get a tape recorder and record everything he says. Do you hear me? Yeah, well, Barry's all I got, and I'm doing everything I can to keep him out of trouble. Now, you want to put him in jail, and I'm not going to have anybody. Will you shut up and just get me out of this? Ma'am, do you think you could... Not till he apologizes. I apologize to her. Ray. Come here, baby. Oh, oh, really okay, me. okay. I'm Come sorry, on, all right? I'm sorry. Fine. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Here you go. Thank you, Carmen. All right. I'll make sure you call me. You know, Ida... I think there probably is a good man waiting out there for you somewhere. One more worthy of your affection. Possibly one who could stay awake. Shut up. Sorry. Good night. Good night. Turnbull. I, uh... I sent him home, Constable. Over two hours ago. Would you care to tell me where you've been? <clears throat> well, I, I've, I've been in a closet, ma'am. Any particular closet? An exotic dancer's closet. Well, that's your business, of course. Uh, well, I don't think you understand, ma'am. I, I was in the closet with Detective Vecchio. I think that's all I care to hear about it, Constable. Perhaps you'll take the assignment I'm about to give you as an opportunity to reflect on the importance of punctuality. Here's everything I could find on Mount Olympus, Ray. There have been some disturbances there recently with their plumbing and electricity and then the rats last night, but they haven't filed any complaints. Thanks, Lane. So you got a lawyer or not? What's the deal? Huey, nice work on that B&E. It's got to be at least a seven. Thank you, Lieutenant. A seven for a B&E? 
You gotta be kidding me. That can't be worth more than a four. Mm, four for the bust. Three for artistic interpretation. Yeah, give me a break. Thank you. Break? Mm. Close the door. Thank you. What is this? Expense report, sir. $220 for strip clubs. I had to go to a lot of them, sir. Here I'm thinking you're out chasing a bomber, and you're going to strip joints. Vecchio, you were in no position to yank my chain. With all due respect, sir, I wouldn't call a shot at taking down Mark Ordover yanking your chain. Mark Ordover? My colleagues in the 14th and 22nd would love to take him down, Mark Ordover? None other, sir. He's the bankroll behind the Mount Olympus Club, and I have reason to believe he's the man who ordered the bombing. What have you got on him? I spoke to one of his people. They're going to be burning down a warehouse. He told you that? I heard it right from his lips. All right, detectives. You got a full team at the warehouse. Thank you, sir. Vecchio. Sir. Stopping a possible mob war. That'll be a 10. A 10, sir. Thank you. Why stop it? Stop what? The mob, beating each other up. Let them take each other out. They're just doing our job for us. Hey! Hey! It's me! I'm the banks from last night! Oh! Hello! Oh. I get it, you can't move, right? Or, or talk or nothing, huh? Yeah. Maybe that ain't so bad, a guy who doesn't talk back. Anyway, I've been thinking about what you said, about how there's a good man out there for me. And then it hit me. You were talking about you. See, the thing is, Barry, he used to be the sweetest guy. I mean, when he was a bouncer, he was so shy, he could hardly even watch me dance, and I like that, you know? But the last couple of months, ever since he got this job, and he was promoted assistant manager, He's been all different and stressy and drinking and talking in his sleep and telling me to shut up all the time and... I just want a guy who's gonna treat me nice, you know? <laughs> so am I right or what? You know? You really are a gentleman. If you want to ask me out sometime, I just might say yes. I mean, that is, if uh, Barry doesn't clean up his act, I mean. Anyway, I gotta get going. See you around, Mr. Mounty. Oh, dear. Here they come. Hold your positions. You had any luck finding out who owns this place? Yeah, it's a dummy corporation, which usually means mob money. I got a lean working on it right now. These things are pretty tough to crack. We've got enough gas to burn down the whole block. Let's get them. Let's go. <laughs> You okay? Yeah, you just wing like this. Sorry, Jack. Maybe you were right. We should have let them take each other out. Don't you keep doing it. Maybe not. Unbelievable. What? The police were at the warehouse, waiting for my guys. Again? That, that's, that's two times in a row. Well, somebody must be talking. Oh, no. No, not me. If I find the leak, it is not going to be pretty. Mr. Ordova, if there's anything I could do, anything, there might be. So what do you feel like, Benny? Chinese, Italian, barbecue? It's your call. Barbecue? All right, I know a great place for ribs. No, no, Ray, the rat I examined, her breath? It had the scent of barbecue sauce and barbecue ribs on it. And it was partially digested, of course, which is why it took me so long to place it. So what does that mean? 
Well, Mount Olympus doesn't offer ribs on his menu, so that's probably not where the rat got the food. So the rats were imported? Well, possibly. So if we can locate the source of the sauce, then we may be able to find the saboteur who released the rats into Mount Olympus. All right, so let's recap. I got a guy who talks in his sleep and a stripper who's ripping your clothes off. No, I didn't say she was trying to rip my clothes off. I said she merely slipped her hand. It's not important. Vecchio. Detective, it's me, Ida. Barry talked in his sleep again. It's bad this time. He's gonna kill someone. You dance because you love it, and then you dance to make money, and I don't mind the taking my clothes off part so much. I really don't. I mean, Isadora Duncan did say that clothes were dishonest anyway, and then you meet a guy, you think that he's the sweetest person in the whole world, and he ends up being a killer. Excuse me. Ida, can we focus here? Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm focused. I'm really focused. Can you get that teddy, please? Ida, who did Barry say that he was going to kill? Like, he's going to tell me. Okay, I'm going to be better off without him. No, you can't leave him. Well, Ray, she has to do what she thinks is right. Benny, you want to work with me here? Look, Ida, you said that you loved him, right? Yeah, I did. All right, now, Barry, he's been under a lot of pressure lately, and he's not at his best. You're just saying that because you want me to keep telling you what he says in his sleep? If that's what it's going to take to prevent a murder, yes. <sighs> Ida, can you think of anyone who would want to hurt Barry? Someone wants to hurt Barry? Ida, he's into some pretty serious stuff here. Yeah, well, you talk to him because he won't listen to me anymore anyway. Ma'am, you're Teddy. <laughs> you know, I, um... I'm still available, that is, if you still want to go out with me sometime. Ida, I, I hope I didn't mislead you in any way. Um... No, 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 see, the invitation, it's uh, still good. <laughs> that is, if you're, um... A decent guy and not a crumb like Barry. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Well, Bunny and I have to go. Well, uh, good night. Good night. Tony's rib pit, the rib shack, ribs o' Rhonda, and tickle my ribs. I think you have all the ribs on the south side. Do you mind if I ask what's going on? They're tasting them. I can see that. I meant why. If you don't want to know. Try me. All right. Rat bread. Oh. Ah. I told you you don't want to know. Ah, ah, ah. Don't wolf it down. You're supposed to taste it. Now remember, we're looking for a combination of jalapeno peppers and rock home honey in a one-to-four ratio. You know, Fraser, we've been at this all morning. Do you mind if we move on? Well, you could help me. I don't think so. All right, I'm going to go shake Barry's peaches. Well, he hasn't done anything right. And if we can find the right sauce, we'll have found a piece of the larger picture. You want to know what the larger picture is? Me without a source. Now i got to catch something for my troubles, even if it is a minnow like Barry. Oh. Wait a minute. Oh, that's disgusting. This is it. The Kit Kat Corral? This ain't no minnow. Well, howdy, partners. Howdy. Yeah, how do you two, partner? We're looking for Litvak. Well, you moseyed in the right saloon, buckaroos. I'm Litvak. What's on your mind? Tomatoes, vinegar, sugar, both brown and white. Mustard, Worcestershire sauce, and jalapeno peppers with Rockholm honey in a wonderful combination. Are you gonna bust me for my mother's rib recipe? Is that what you're gonna do? No, how about 50 rats chasing away the customers at Mount Olympus? Hey, pal, don't blame me. Maybe those rats were just looking for one of their own kind. <laughs> yeah, and maybe you're not up to the competition. Mark or Dola? Competition? Hell. You must be kidding. Howdy, Hello, Shelly. Hello, girl. See that? That's the real reason I love this business. Mr. Litvak, I'd like to take a look in your kitchen, if you don't mind. What for? Evidence linking you to the rats? Hey, kid. You don't seriously think that I could go down for rat food, do you? No, but he does, and that's all that counts. Come on with me. The kitchen's back here. That's all that counts. What the hell do you mean by that? 
We want you to call a truce with Ordover. Truce? <laughs> Must be kidding. He'd only break it. That punk got the ethics of a rattlesnake. Yeah, well, when he breaks it, you give me a call. Because if you get me something I can use on Ordover, maybe nobody has to know about the rats. Fair enough, partner. Now, uh, why don't you get along, little doggy? I have 75 candles to blow out tonight. Gotta conserve my breath. <laughs> yeah, happy trails to you, partner. Nelson. Yes, Mr. Lithek. I like that mounty look. But I could do without those two guys, frickin' frack. Make sure that I don't see them anymore, do you understand me? This is the sauce. Ida? Is that you? Oh, hi. What are you doing here? I'm making a living. They gave me a job. But I miss Barry. Great. Well, not that you miss Barry, that uh, maybe it's time for reconciliation. I'm not going to get back together with Barry just so I can ran on him. Well, not just so you can rat on him. Don't you get it? I just want the old Barry back. Well, if we don't find out who Barry's going to kill, Ray, Ray, can I have a word with you? Excuse me. You better talk to Walsh for a 24-hour tail on this guy. I think I'd like to try something else. Excuse me. This private club, Paul. Well, actually, I came to see you. Me? I know you? No. But I know you. That's a good one. I ain't heard that one in a long time. That's what guys used to say when they wanted me to throw a fight. But you never did, did you? No. No. But I might as well have. Hey, listen, Red, if you're gonna stand there and talk, why don't you come over here and hold the bag so I don't cool down? You know, I stopped at the library on the way over. I looked up some old articles on your career. It was very promising for a while. Yeah, you win some, you lose some, right? In the end, it seems you lost rather more than you won. Listen, I fought my heart out every time. You know, my friend Ray describes one of your fights. He bet a substantial amount of money on you. If he wants his money back, tell him to forget it. No, it's not about the money. What he describes is the third round. You'd hit your opponent with three solid hooks. His legs were rubbery, he was about to go down. All you needed was one more punch. Yet you didn't have the heart to throw that punch. Your opponent recovered. They knocked you out in the fourth. Hey, well, if I had to do it over again, I'd throw the stupid punch. But according to your record, you never did. And that's why people started calling you a loser. Well, listen, I'm not a loser. No, I know you're not. I know that. Particularly not to people who matter. What's your point? Get to your point. I'm a friend of Ida's. And we'll be at the 12th Street Grill at 7 o'clock, if you'd care to join us. Hey, Barry, you want to see me? Yeah, Mr. Dover, I, I had to tell you, I'm going to have a second thoughts. Really? Yeah, he's just that... Well... I, I got some stuff to straighten out with Ida. She... Wait a second, I thought that was over. I thought your mind was on the business at hand. Well, it is, it, it is, but believe me. Uh... What's important to you? I mean, do you want to move up in the world? Or do you like the view from the bottom? Well, I'm going to be someone. Then think about what's best for Barry right now. Yeah, but Ida, she... No, no, Barry, you're not listening. Think about it. I got a job for you, Leo. Yeah, thanks, Elaine. Great work. Hey, Benny. Well, you were right about Litvac. He's the money behind the warehouse and that liquor dump. Oh, that's good. I thought you'd be here with Ida. Oh, she'll be here. She just stopped home to change. How about Barry? Is he gonna come? Well, I guess we'll know when he gets here. You think he would be a little more non-committal? Well, I didn't put a gun to his head. You know, Benny, you need a good luck charm. Something that'll give you a little more optimism. I happen to think I'm very optimistic, right? All right, then tell me that Barry's going to show. Did you feel it in your gut? Well, I can't. Empirically, I don't know whether he's going to show. See? No optimism. All right. Excuse me. Yeah. We'll have four menus, please. Is that his normal? 
Yeah, it's a start. Thank you kindly. Back to her apartment, goes to the John, that's two minutes. She applies her makeup, that's an additional ten minutes. Changes her clothes, five or six more. Something's wrong. Let's go. Pappas. It's Ida. Hey, baby. I was just thinking about you. Well, don't. Don't, don't what? Think about me. I'm not going to be meeting you at the diner, Barry, so don't bother showing up. What? What do you mean? Mr. Lipbeck offered to pay me twice as much money to dance than you ever did. He's a really nice guy, and he told me that he was going to introduce me to all kinds of guys who are really good looking and successful. So I'm sorry, Barry, but I officially don't want to see you anymore. Wait a second. Ida, you, you're talking crazy. I love you. I gotta go. She dumped me. She, she's working for Litvag. Women. They'll do this to you every time. No, 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 no not Ida. They, they see a greener pasture, they're gone. It's tough to know who your friends are sometimes. Litvag, that son of a bitch. I'll show him. Mr. Ordova, you, you didn't get anybody else to do the job, did you? Barry, look, forget about it. I know you're not feeling sure no. on this one. I'll do it. When do you want me to do it? So, although Uncle Purvis did instruct me in the essence of escape maneuvers, I was never quite able to manage the art of dislocating my joints. Although they say that skill is actually hereditary, so I'm sorry about your sunglasses, Ray. Well, at least they were good for something. Those guys made me see terrible things to Barry. Like what? Like that I had to leave him for Shelley Litvak. It's an interesting plan. I suggest we move quickly.
invitations, please? This is my invitation, pal. Unless you have a warrant to go with that, I'm afraid you're out of luck. I'm afraid your boss is in serious danger. I find that hard to believe. What are you gonna do now? Well, I'm sure it's not an insoluble problem, right? What are you gonna do, ask somebody for their invitation? That's a good idea, excuse me. I have reason to believe that the life of someone in that club is in danger. I wonder if I could use your invitation to gain entrance. Thank you kindly. Hi, excuse me, there's somebody in there who's in danger. You think I could... Pardon me, there's a man who's in... Ladies and gentlemen, how about a great big happy birthday to the kindest, the handsomest, the most honest man you ever want to meet, the king of the Kit Kat Corral, Mr. Shelley Radham Cowboy Licka! Thank you, thank you folks, thank you, and uh, thank you honey. You said it just the way I wrote Fred. He took my Ida. It was Ordover who had Ida kidnapped. Yeah. He forced her to make that call. He's right. He knew you'd be so angry that you'd try to kill Litvak for stealing your girl. Right again. Then where's Ida? <laughs> Ida. It's true, Barry. Everything you said is true. Ida, you used to love me. Yes, with very few conditions. One of them is that you put down the gun, Barry. The other? You give us everything you have on Mark Ordo. Ida. Barry. Oh. Oh. My Barry. Oh. Oh. All right, folks. So much for the showdown. Let's start the whole down. You know, Benny, those glasses were driving me crazy. I think I'm done with this superstition thing. No more lucky pennies, no more magic pencils, no more chanting. You chant, Ray? Well, not anymore. From now on, it's hard evidence and empirical logic. Uh, it's a wise decision. Excuse me. Um, I was just at Ida's place. She found these on the floor and asked me to give them back to you. Thank you. If you ask me, though, you got such nice eyes, it's a shame to cover them up. Really? Yeah. Would you like to go out for a coffee or something? I'd like that very much. Yeah? Great. <laughs> Great. Oh, watch out for that crack. Bad luck. I 
mountains, northern sky will carry you away. You know you have to leave here. You wish that you could stay. Four directions on this map, but you're only going.